Big thanks to my Patreon supporters over on Patreon.com. Starting a dollar a month, you can help support the channel, and you get access to early looks at what I'm working on. You can get files off of my Discord server, have contact with me more easily over on Discord, and uh, yeah, we generally hang out. I try to you know be available on there at least a couple times a week for video chats or whatever. And uh, yeah, or after the video. What's good, everybody? My name is Valor. Welcome back to this little temporary presentation table, I guess. Uh, it's been a long time coming again uh, because, again, life's been crazy. And my sort of lab mic decided to go MIA on me, so you're just hearing me through the microphone on my camera source. So we'll see how that is in post-production. Anyway, today we are taking a look at the Wrecked Up 4 and... Op 6. Now, starting off with the Op 6, it is a small single shot pistol powered by a single CO2 canister. And yeah, it is real steel ish, but it's not really based on any sort of actual real steel farm that I can tell. But I can tell it's actually based on this. This is a uh, another Umarex airsoft pistol that actually uses their little Beretta mags. And same exact mechanism, same exact sort of shell, except they extended the front out longer to accommodate a Nerf dart. Simply pop the back strap open, load your 12 gram CO2 cartridge into there, twist the little nut here until it actually seals fully. You will hear, lose a little bit of gas, but that's normal and that's actually kind of wanted. And then take the safety off. There's only on one side. Uh, so, right-handers will like this a lot more than left-handers. Left-handers, you probably hit it with your le left thumb, but that will be more difficult. And simply pull back to fire once you have loaded your single dart. And the FPS out of this skirts around the sort of 100 FPS mark. Uh, but that is entirely dependent on your darts and whether or not you actually fully seat that dart back into the barrel, because this thing has an air restrictor even though there's no sort of plunger to you know, keep safe. So that does not make a whole lot of sense. I can understand having a dart stop so it doesn't go too far back in the barrel and maybe put some gunk up into the system. But having an air restrictor is just kind of dumb in my opinion. And you know, having the barrel only be, you know, like maybe an inch and a half or so. But you know, for a sort of plinking pistol, it's okay. Uh, even with the uh, the most common dart, which is the Adventure Horse Waffle, you will still get a little bit of fish tailing. And that one didn't fire hard at all. There you go. That one actually fired. It. I find that it's a bit inconsistent whenever you're firing more rapidly. Uh, if you let the sort of single shot sort of system kind of warm back up because as you dispel CO2 out of the canister, it does get cold, and that does kind of reduce the pressure of the air in the whole system. It is easy to see on this thing, the whole hammer action that it does, because the CO2 canister is in the grip here, and that goes up to a small little tank up here. And whenever you pull the trigger, it brings this sort of breech system forward, and then it will slam backwards onto the air release on there, releasing a small amount of the gas. And it's a pretty cool system, especially if you want a you know single shot, like semi-auto sort of system. And it works really well with the airsoft stuff. But, you know, that is not nerf. That's not what we're focusing on. This thing is okay. But the fact that it is only single shot, and, you know, the fact that it is very inconsistent because of that lack of, you know, full-on barrel and everything, because it's actually using a little bit too much air for the actual amount of barrel. I find my shots go really crazy, especially with those darts that are essentially Vauberries that they include. Um, it's a very cool concept, though. Like, for a cosplay, LARP, this is a great little single-shot backup pistol, right? or maybe even your main pistol if you don't intend on shooting that much in said game. 
Now, the stock sort of look is really cool. It's blue with this sort of crack shatter pattern. Uh, they also have this in a red that has like kind of an orangey kind of uh, vibe going on with the cracks. But yeah, like it is comfortable in hand, but you definitely do not want to sort of take this in a public space, even though it is bright blue with an orange tip, because it is so very much like an actual firearm. Put safety back on. There you go. It, safety disconnects the trigger completely. Got your sort of rail down there if you want a light, if you're sort of playing an indoor game. And uh, yeah, we'll get on to the next blaster. Next blaster on the table is the Op 4. Or is it the Op 6? I think it's actually the Op 6. The pistol is the Op 4, or the other way around. The names are sort of confusing. It's similar with Nerf Ultra. <laughs> but yeah, this is a MagFed primary, similar idea to the pistol where you have the CO2 be the main source of power, but this one takes two in the stock buffer tube here. Put one in facing that way with the nozzle and then one facing backwards and then you just twist this cap until both of them are pierced and that will give you plenty of shots. Got to pull this lock out on the stock here. Now there's one thing about this buffer tube here is actually not compatible. Find one. Where is it? Anyway. It is not compatible with regular like airsoft spec, you know, buffer tube stocks because this portion right here, this little rectangle that comes out of the sort of round tube is actually slightly longer. So your standard sort of M4 style, you know, airsoft stocks will not fit on this without a modification to that sort of channel there. The included stock works just fine, and since it's modeled after a battery stock, you can actually store CO2 canisters in here. So if you need a quick reload or whatever, you can easily do that. There you go. I'm actually going to take it out a couple of positions. There you go. It's nice and comfortable. And uh, yeah, you might be noticing that I'm only really showing it on this side. That's because. Uh, during my sort of testing everything, during some downtime, I was painting something and the sort of bottle of paint spilled on the ground and whenever it hit the ground it splattered and this thing was actually sitting on my chair that is over there. And it actually ended up with a splatter of this copper paint. Uh, the pistol suffered the same fate, but not quite as bad. You do have a magazine release here. There's a button, so it is, if you are used to the sort of Button M4, you know, mag release right here. It's perfectly fine. To load up a mag in here, you need to take it off of safe and into fire. And it is a sort of M4 style, you know, rotating safety. So that is quite nice. There is no auto feature. Like, there is a small bump right here, like there would be a, another fire mode. But sadly, no. It is only a semi auto pump action sort of primary style thing. To load a mag, you simply prime it back and take your mag of darts. I just have this loaded with Adventure Wars Waffles because that's the most common dart you'll likely see out in a Nerf War or whatever. Stick it in, and it does look a bit like a steel mag for an M4, M16, that sort of thing. Bring it forward, and you're ready to fire. But before I fire, you notice here there is the ejection port. There's actually a jam door. So you can, you know, see the whole mechanism, and it's actually a quite easy way to get in there and fix any jams or anything. And since this thing is not spring-powered, you have no worries about the pusher slamming forward while you're working on this thing. And, you know, it, it's quite safe that way. Snap that back in. It is a bit stiff. I did hurt my finger the first few times opening this thing, so you really have to kind of push down on it. And even then, I still kind of hurt my thumb there doing that. But yeah. Got this thing chambered. I'm gonna bring it around this way and fire. And that shot was not great. There we go. That is one of the biggest sort of complaints I have with this blaster. Uh, just like the pistol, it is very ins inconsistent because it has the air restrictor on the pusher itself. And the pusher just kind of seats up against the barrel. There's no actual real seal. Uh, and the barrel is not that long or anything, so 
you are sort of suffering in that respect. Uh, if they were to make a new version of this with a proper, you know, no air restrictor, just a straight up pusher with an O-ring and everything and, you know, provide a few spare O-rings, it would be much better. But there is a feature that is not advertised and I haven't seen anyone else mention about this thing. Because it's a hammer style, you know, valve, you can actually hold the trigger down and slam fire this thing, which is really cool. And, you know, for a rapid fire, you know, and shots, that's great. And the fact that they didn't even advertise that, you know, it might not be an intended feature, but it works. That was a thing with some older blasters that had slam fire, it wasn't intended. And yeah, the performance is sort of meh, you kind of get variations. And this thing is compatible with half dart mags, but big caveat here. The fact that the darts don't really seat into the barrel here and they don't fully put pressure on that uh, air restrictor on the pusher and everything, again, it leads to inconsistency. You can get up to like, you know, 160, but oftentimes you'll get less than that. Um, mostly because, you know, the dart isn't, you know, thick enough to really put friction on the barrel, which would actually cause the pressure to go back onto the spring and the air restrictor. And the fact that uh, this thing is not easily openable. I tried to take this thing apart by, you know, unscrewing the one screw that's in the grip here and removing it, but it seems that it's solvent welded, which is kind of a shame because this would be great for, you know, cosplay and stuff, but the fact that you can't really take it apart to, you know, work on it, say if a seal goes bad or something, you can't, you know, fix it. It's the same problem with Ultra. And, you know, the fact that you use CO2 cartridges, you know, CO2 canisters are not that expensive, but, you know, over time it can get a little bit pricey, especially if you're just a little, like, say, little Timmy wants one of these things to be, like, Call of Duty man and everything and just shoot cans or something in the backyard, you know. If he's going to run through, like, a whole box of these things in an evening, and these are just, you know, Crossman CO2 canisters I got from Walmart because I actually ran through the Umarex canisters that they sent with this initially, uh, when are like ages ago that were Umarex branded. To depressurize this thing, you can just twist the key to the left, and then twist this cap. It is a little bit stiff because it's been on here all, all day, just so I could do some more testing. Yeah, there we go. is very sort of picky about, you know, releasing the, the pressure from the casters. There we go. There wasn't much in those casters anyway. That might be part of why my performance wasn't as good. But on fresh casters, you'll get pretty good performance. There you go. There's one. There's two. Spent casters, you know, here's a hole in the top. You can't reuse them. And I will demonstrate again, you know, the loading. One nozzle towards the blaster, one nozzle away. Let me just get this in here. Now, you will want to make sure you have grease on the O-ring on this cap here. Because that helps seal this whole canister because this whole buffer tube becomes pressurized. It's similar to an airsoft gas gun where you, you know, pressurize the sort of uh, buffer tube and then tank up in here. So you'll want to make sure those seals are good. And I am wary that maybe those seals can go over time. And again, because you can't easily open this thing, that might, you know, lead to this thing essentially being a brick. Good for cosplay, but nothing else. But the overall look of it is not bad. Like, I mean, it's, it's based on an M4, which is the most common sort of styling for a, you know, a rifle in, you know, like at least the U.S. in my experience. Front grip up here is, it looks like it's one of those where you can screw up the bottom. It's actually just 
two pieces that are clamshelled over a aluminum cast bar here. So making a new grip, you know, if you want something a little beefier or something, something looks slightly different, you can go with that. But the fact that, you know, it's not like a sliding block with Picatinny on it, like some other blasters, it really limits your options. Like you can't really customize this much. Same with the sort of A-frame sight up here. It is just molded into this bit of plastic here, so you can't exactly remove it. It'd be great if that were an option where you can remove it and you know, accessorize it and whatever. Got your full top rail, side rails, and this rear sight here, which has optional apertures that you can you know, flip between. But you can also remove this entirely and you know have just flat on rail, but then you'll still have this front sight here. I think a full carry handle would look nice on here for cosplay purposes. Faux charging handle. And uh, yeah, like, it's not bad, but there are a lot of caveats with a blaster that is powered off of CO2 canisters because most places will not allow CO2 to be used in public. I think that's actually all over the US. Now, if you play at, say, an airsoft field, a paintball field, that's fine. Private woods, whatever, what have you. Bonanza, go you go ahead and use it. But the fact that it's not really able to be used everywhere will limit its, you know, its acceptability in this hobby. Let's fire that off. Actually, no, I, di I didn't prime. But yeah, like, I like it, but also I'm not sure where I can exactly use it other than, like, one place. And, you know, it's $80. This is an expensive blaster, especially when something like the Nexus Pro exists. If I had not waited and you know published my original recording of this video before the Nexus Pro and all that came out, you know I could probably you know justify this a little bit more. But the fact that it is you know it is you know CO2 powered, it's expensive. You can't exactly easily work on it, say if something goes bad inside of it, or even you know just for painting, if you wanted to paint this up really cool. Like, I mean, the shatter pattern is really cool. Say, like, just like on the pistol here. And the fact that it works, you know, off a CO2 canister. But, it's not able to be used everywhere. And that's the biggest thing against these two blasters. They are definitely for sort of, say, you're an adult who plays airsoft and everything, and your kid wants something that you know, he can play with as well in the backyard or whatever, that's fine. Taking this out in public, though, like, and there, I know there are laws in certain places about replica firearms, like at least in certain parts of Australia and stuff. There is legality or anything, and like, something that looks this much like an actual, you know, an M4 rifle, you know, you know, it's, it's uh, yeah. It's cool. Like, hmm. final verdict is that they're cool, but I don't see myself using them all that often just because they're not able to be used everywhere. And also the limitations to them. Like, you know, this isn't able to be removed so you can have just whatever site up here, like have flip up sites or something. The fact that the stock is not compatible, like with like the buffer tube at least, is not compatible with other stocks that are available. At least of the ones I've tried. Like, I have a stock that is almost identical to this one, but meant for airsoft. Like, proper, you know, just like an AEG or whatever. Um, the fact that the breech does not seal. Like, it's just, it kind of pushes up against kind of a, a somewhat of a breech piece with an air restrictor and everything, and it just relies on that bit of gas to push it through the barrel, and the barrel is very, very loose, at least in my experience. Like, if I were able to open it, I could probably fix that, make it better, make it work really well and make it work great for say an indoor arena or something and make it a competitive great blaster i mean as it is it hits like kind of 120s ish and then it has like some shots of like 150 or 160 if you leave it sitting for a bit to let it warm back up even with a poor seal up here in the breach i would love if boomerangs would reach out to other nerf like nerfers like me drac walcom jangular he is great in the competitive scene and if they could make something spring powered, like I've seen where Crossman, the makers of these canisters, has, you know, branched out into the dart blasting hobby by licensing the use of the CETA platform 
and modifying it to look nicer. It has like an M lock handguard and everything. I'd love to get one of those. Um, I mean, it's a C to S, but it's cool. And the fact that Crossman is sort of licensing a design from another company that they can make and have in the States ready to go. And it's spring powered, so you can use it practically anywhere as long as it's within the FPS limit of like you know, 150 or so. That'll be perfect. And this is also on the shelves, ready to go. But again, limitations. That's my final verdict. I will drop a link down to Umarex's wrecked site where you can kind of check out these things and find availability. If you are still interested in these things just for plinking around or cosplay or LARP or what have you. And uh, yeah, I do apologize to my contact over at Umarex for taking so long on this video. It's just, you know, things have been crazy in this world. And uh, I've been busy with work. And this is actually the second filming of this video. The first filming, I was suffering from a very bad uh, migraine. And you could really tell in that video that I was rushing really hard. And I think that me having time to play around with these things, get my thoughts together, you know, is good for this video because, you know, I can be completely objective about it. And what have you. And, uh, yeah, as ever, thanks for watching. Thanks once again for watching. My name is Valor. And as always, this video is supported by my Patreon supporters over on Patreon.com. Starting a dollar a month, you can help the channel out and get access to perks like access to the Patreon-only Discord server, where you can get some files that I've designed myself. You can chat around with other fans of me and what I would do. You can also get sneak peeks at what I'm working on next and, you know, just get general contact with me so you can get help from me. I always try to help my Patreon supporters as best I can. And as ever, links down below. Thanks for watching.